Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of my Nashville Entrepreneurship Series for Work Smart Podcast. I'm so excited. I'm here with Joshua. We're going to talk all about Pivot Tech. He is a Nashville native, so we're going to get into one of the themes that we've been talking about during this show is what's it like to be an entrepreneur in Nashville? A lot of people were surprised that I moved here. Right. They were like, huh? Right. <laughs> <laughs> you went from San Francisco to LA to Nashville. Nashville, yes. You know, and it's funny too, because I travel a lot and um, I'll be at a conference or something in New York or in the Bay and they'll be like, oh, where do you live? You live in LA? And I'm like, no. They're like, oh, so you live in New York? I'm like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then it's like this whole code switching where they're processing like, how do I value you if you don't live in Atlanta, New York, or LA? Right. Are you legit? Are you a fraud? And I'm right. like, this is a lot of going on in your mind right. trying to evaluate me because I don't live in LA. No, we're so. Um, I wanted to make sure that I had a couple of episodes just talking about what it's like to live here right. for those people who might be considering moving to the city, mm -hmm. the pluses, the minuses, different yep. types of entrepreneurs that are here. Yep. No one better than you to talk about right. the entire <laughs> ecosystem. For sure. Um, and then also want to hear what's going on with you, some of the new projects, and we can talk about some of the other things that I'm working on as well. Awesome. Let's do it. So first, let's start with who you are. So Joshua Mundy. Um, been, I guess I was I was born in Lafayette, Louisiana. Really? Yeah, Lafayette. Uh, but I've been in Nashville all my life. Yeah. So Nashville is home. I uh, went to high school here. So I'm rare. Like everybody's invading Nashville right now. But I'm invading? like invading Nashville. Okay. And it really it. so it was it's been happening for the last I would say four years. Yeah. But when the pandemic hit, right, it changed the game. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, everybody's invading Nashville. But I'm the only like three or four people that actually went to high school here, right. went to college here, yeah. and like just been here all my life. So I've been a uh, full-time entrepreneur for about 18 years. Wow. I've opened up- So many businesses. You're a so serial many. entrepreneur. Yes, I've opened up serial, I mean like just so many different types of businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, we'll talk about the, you know, all the businesses that I've been into, but just been doing business in Nashville for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. So. I think I can name a couple of your businesses. So we've got uh, Pivot Tech. Yeah, Pivot Tech. We've got real estate. Yeah, very hard, heavy in real estate. Which I didn't know until recently. I was like, what is this real estate at tag he has? Yes. So yeah. we got to talk about that. And nonprofit, yeah. well, just like as a category. Then yeah. you had a co-working space. Yeah, so um, a lot of things have changed in my life in the last two years. Okay. Uh, so I had a dry cleaners. What? Yeah, so... <laughs> All right, let's let's go over all these okay, businesses. Okay, okay. Yes, so break it like two thousand and two, I opened up my very first business. So I opened up a janitorial service. Okay. Uh, I got into janitorial because it was just easy. You yeah. know, it was just only cost me like $25, $30 right. to start. Right. And I built that into a six figure business. Okay. Sold that business. Then I opened up a restaurant in an area called Murfreesboro. Yep. Now, Murfreesboro is probably like 30, 40 minutes away from Nashville. Right. Growing like crazy right now. That's growing like crazy. And like that was like one of my pitfalls in business. Mm. So I sold my janitorial business, which was going great mm -hmm. and got into the restaurant business, which, which is, is the worst terrible business. Terrible margins. Oh, I mean, terrible <laughs> margins, but really I didn't know, you know, I'm less like a it's aggressive. It's a sexy business. Yes, it's I sexy. will come to my restaurant. Yeah. It's like, I was, I was had like a concept, like a coffee shop. Okay. Like right across from MTSU. Uh -huh. And I just oh. thought this was going to be a home run. Yeah. You know, I'm going to be open 24 hours. Right. You know, we was going to just be the students there. Yeah, like I had all, the, all these elements. Yes. And if you look in uh, online or Google uh -huh. in the Guinness Book of World Records, like the fastest opening and closing of a business, yeah. you'll see my face. <laughs> I was open for 30 days, literally, <laughs> oh, oh, and no. spent probably like a quarter of a million dollars. Bro. In that. So I was like very young. So I was like oh, 24, God. 25. And I was in real Thank estate God you then. Were young and you so, could bounce back. But so literally... For like three years, I was trying to figure it out. Yeah. Like I lost all this money. Ugh. I sold a good profitable business. Cash flow. Cash, Cash flow, flow in business. And I got into this. So like from 2005 to 2008, I was just hustling. Yeah. Just trying to figure it out because totally. I made that vow like to God. I was like, man, look, no matter how hard it gets, I'm never going to go work for anybody. Mm -hmm. So I just hustled for three years. 2008 comes. Mm -hmm. And I see this building on the corner of 7th and Jefferson. Mm -hmm. So Jefferson Street, for your listeners, it's a very historic area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, has three HBCs, HBCUs on it. So yeah. you have Fisk, Meharry, yep. TSU. Yep. Uh, just a lot of rich a history. A lot of energy right there. Yes. 
And uh, so I saw this building on the corner of 7th and Jefferson. Now, it's not what it is now. Mm-hmm. So it was, it was an area called Germantown. Yes. So Germantown was the hood. Right. Was. Was. We're going to get into that in a yeah, second. But yes. Was the hood. Right. And uh, so I saw the space. I'm like, man, I got to have this space. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Mm-hmm. And so I signed a lease. Didn't know you what I was going to do. You are like not a tiptoer at no, all. No, I don't tiptoe. <laughs> so literally signed a lease. Yeah. Didn't know what I was going to do with it. Yeah. And then went to sleep, woke up, hit me. Dry cleaners. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. Like I just rode around the neighborhood. Yep. And I don't have experience in, you know, dry cleaning <laughs> business. I, to this day, I've never ironed a shirt, pressed a Stop. pair of pants. None of that. Okay. So I just figured out a way to get in the dry cleaning business. Yeah. And that's really my theme. It's just like, I really don't have experience in the things that I get into, uh-huh. but I just know how to build and scale businesses. Right. So I was in the dry cleaning business uh, up until March the 3rd of 2020. Wow. Uh, so it was a big historic building and mm-hmm. I opened up several businesses in that building. Yeah. So I had a co-working space in the B side. Did you buy or lease the building? I leased the building. Okay. I wanted to purchase the building. Yeah. Uh, and to, and uh, I was in 2012, mm-hmm. it was for sale for mm. like $1.4 million. Which now would be like, yo, you'd be sitting on five like a to steal. 10 mil. Yeah. Now, now, if you look at it, it was coming out of a recession. Sure. And I'm like, yo, I'm not going to pay $1.4 yeah, yeah, million yeah. Dollars for Germantown. this. Germantown. I'm like, <laughs> no. And then they announced that the stadium was coming, yeah. the sound stadium. Mm-hmm. So when I opened up the dry cleaners, people thought I was insane. They thought mm-hmm. I was crazy. They're mm-hmm. like, yo, you opened up a dry cleaners in Germantown. Yeah. Like, this is the hood. Right. Like, all these different things. And then as soon as they announced the stadium, yep. which is a baseball stadium, mm-hmm. Then my business just took off. Right. Now I thought I was crazy too. Because I'm like, we were struggling trying <laughs> so to figure to it out. So you had to buy the machines. No, I you didn't do any of that. How does a dry I don't know anything so, about it. I've looked at it. I'm like, should I do this? So let me give you, you know, I'll give you the dry cleaning game. Tell okay. Me. So I thought so too. I was like, man, I'm going to go buy the machines. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do all this stuff. Right. And I looked at the cost of buying all those machines right. and it was a quarter of a million yeah, dollars. Expensive. Very expensive. Yes. So what I did was I said, let me find a wholesaler. So what you do is, is that, so it was a guy in town. He had the biggest warehouse. He had all of the machines. He had all of of the workers. Wow. And all we did was I negotiated a price. It was like a white label. He had like a basically a white label. It was like a white label, white labeling system where he gave me a wholesale price. Yes. So it was wholesale to retail. I was just the middleman. Okay. So pretty much. So you people, drop off your clothes. They would drop off their clothes early in the morning. Yep. Then we would put the clothes in the bag, put them on the van. My driver would take it to the warehouse, clean them, wow. bring them back. My team would sort them, bag them up, and that's it. I so I didn't it. have any overhead. Nope. Like my overhead was very minimal. Yeah. Just I just had a lease. lease. And my driver yeah. and somebody working in front counter. So where's the dry cleaning business now? Okay, so we're gonna get to that. Okay. <laughs> so um pretty much I was, I mean, was doing very well uh-huh. with that dry cleaning yeah, business. That sounds like a good one. Oh yeah, we was I was making great money. Yeah. I'm talking about great money. And uh so ran that March the third, twenty twenty. Yep. Is uh something that really changed my life yep. pretty much and the forever. City. Yeah. Uh, and the city mm-hmm. forever. So uh, let's, and we'll, we'll build up on that. So 2019, mm-hmm. just doing business in the city. And I'm always a part of all these. They pull me to be a part of all this leadership, this. Yes. And, well, they need some black folks. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So the chamber, this, yes. and like, I'm a part of a lot of different things. And uh, so we were really going to like study everything Nashville had going on mm-hmm. from education, yep. crime and safety, economic development, all these things. Mm-hmm. And then we traveled to Austin, Texas mm-hmm. to study what they had mm-hmm. going on and bring some of those ideas back to Nashville. Mm-hmm. So at the time we were going to all these technology hubs. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about like so many tech technology hubs, yeah. people were coding, building apps. Yes. I looked around and there were no black people. None. And then the whole city, I didn't even know the city was like this. Mm-hmm. The city is white, white. Mm-hmm. Like it's no black people. And at, leadership. Yeah. Just 
in general. Yeah. Like I'm just looking for the waitress to be black. You know what I'm saying? The bartender, yeah, you know, yeah. the bus boy. Yeah. No black people right. at all. We was the only black people I saw on the whole trip. It was like six of in us. In Austin? In Austin, Texas. Not during uh, uh, South by Southwest. Not True, during that time. Fair. We're talking about a regular yeah. Austin day. Yeah. Well, black it, people in Texas live in Houston and Dallas. Uh, now there's a little sprinkling in Austin, yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah, so literally I looked around and they, we was going to all these like co-working spaces mm -hmm. that looked like my co-working mm -hmm. space. And uh, so I literally looked around. I was like, you know what? I'm going to open up a technology school mm -hmm. when I get back to the city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this was in 2019. Mm -hmm. Came up with the name Pivot Technology School. Such a good name. In 2019. Right. Okay. Uh, so worked on this concept idea all the way into, uh, and it's reskilling, right? Yeah. So we'll, we'll talk about pivot. Okay. We'll get in depth, but it just, this, this culminates the story, okay. you know? So I got to tell you the story. We got to lift it up, you know? So <laughs> literally we worked on this, got with my current business partner who has the tech background, Quan mm -hmm. Clark. I don't have a tech background mm -hmm. at all. I don't know how to code. Don't know any of that terminology. I learned it along while building it. Mm -hmm. And so March the second, I convinced people, hey, this is something Josh is doing. Now Josh ain't in the dry clean. Josh is still in the dry cleaning business, but I'm in the tech business too. So people are like, yo. This is too much, but it's okay. This, dude, you're doing too much, Josh. <laughs> you all over the place. But I'm like, no, I'm not. Yes. So March the second, very first day of orientation. Mm -hmm. March the third was the very first day of classes. Mm -hmm. March the third uh was the great tornado yeah. that hit my location on the corner of 7th and Jefferson. So pretty much lost everything in a matter of uh, an hour or two. Mm. So woke up, March the 3rd, phone ringing off the hook, one in the morning. Mm. I'm talking about, I mean, hundreds of calls. Mm -hmm. I'm knocked out. Cause they're trying to make sure you're okay. Well, it's like, you know, the sirens go off all the time yeah. in this city. Yeah, so it's I don't a tornado take a city. city. It's a yeah. tornado city, so yeah. I don't take it serious. I'm knocked out, I'm asleep. Right. So my phone ringing off the hook, my dad calls Oof. and he just called again. I'm like, okay, something going on. So yeah. I answered the phone and my dad was like, hey son, I think you've been hit. <sighs> hit? I'm, I'm fine. fine. <laughs> what you talking about? I've been hit. Yeah. He's even turning on the news. Oh wow. And I turned it on the news and it was just my building. Gone. Gone. Roof off. Oh my God. Top floor. Just the whole top floor gone. Oh my God. So just pretty much, it was like, how everything is orchestrated. Yeah. And when you really like listen to your inner voice of God or mm -hmm. whoever you listen to, to tell you to make moves that don't really make sense, mm. but it really prepares you for times that you don't even really see this coming. Mm -hmm. So March the 3rd, the tornado hit, but we started our very first day of classes of Pivot Technology mm -hmm. School. Three weeks, four weeks later, come, guess what happens? Hmm. The pandemic. Mm -hmm. Great, 2020. Pandemic hits. Yeah. So just think about all the businesses that I were in. Uh, so ouch. I was in the dry cleaning business. Right, which is, a, I'm not taking my clothes. I have no place to go. Where am I going? Come on. <laughs> uh, the co-working space business. I can't be really close to you. Nope. I can't have events. I had a vent no. space upstairs. I can't have it. But then I received something yeah. that could thrive in the middle of a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And that was Pivot Technology yeah. School. Virtual. Boom. So virtual. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. So it was really like almost like a divine type intervention that I didn't even know I needed. Oof. That's you know? tough though. I would have been on the floor. Were you on the floor? I was on the floor. Yeah, I would have been on the floor. <laughs> I was about, so it took me about two months to get that kind of perspective. Okay. So I was working out. That's a long eight weeks. Yeah, that's a long eight weeks to try to figure out like, what the hell am I going to do? Yeah. Like, yo, I'm making $750,000 yeah. doing these businesses. Yeah. I have nothing. Yeah. Like, it all Who am out. I in, in relation to? What am I going to do? Yeah. But then realize that, yo, I was probably honestly doing too much. You think you were? I, so I think I was stretched a little bit. Okay. Even though I had systems. Yes. I had processes. Yeah, you hire people. Yeah, I yes. hire people. You I did smart. all those things. I worked smart. But yeah. But it was really like one of those things was like, now I'm going to take away these things that really don't add a lot of value mm. and I'm going to give you something that can really take you to a whole nother level and value meaning <clears throat> impact impact. Yeah. A dry cleaning business like that's great yeah. cash flow, but 
Is well, this your legacy? Is this your mission? Yeah, is this yeah. the legacy piece? Yeah. And you know, and I, I've always done things around the community, mm-hmm. around entrepreneurship and things mm-hmm. of that nature. But I just felt like that it was time to say, Josh, I'm gonna silence all of this because I really want you to focus on this. Mm. And I know that I need 100% focus right here. Yeah. And I don't need you like spread on four different things. You <laughs> right, know what I'm saying? Right. So it was like, I, I, I have a philosophy. I call it the mashed potato effect. Okay. Okay. Break it down. Let me break it down. <laughs> so the mashed potato effect is just really having one thing that's a sol- your solid foundation. Mm-hmm. Your one thing that either pays all your bills, mm-hmm. that does everything for you, that's your one solid foundation. Mm-hmm. And then you go out and find the gravy. Mm. So you go out and find your real estate. Mm -hmm. You go out and find the things Mm -hmm. that are more passive Mm -hmm. that that, that supports that Mm -hmm. mashed potatoes. Right. So I had like six different buckets of mashed potatoes. Well, that's you know? true. Yes. And when you have like no like one solid <laughs> foundation, yeah. and you, you have such so many. Right. It just takes you and you just be so stretched. Yeah. So that's I'm like, OK, now pivot is my foundation. Right. And now let me just add things that are in line with pivot. Mm hmm. But it doesn't take me away and it just kind of I can build like different streams off of Pivot Technology mm-hmm. School. So Pivot, mm-hmm. it, it's a I would say it's workforce development. OK. All right. So you wouldn't, I, I you wouldn't call s- it reskilling. It is reskilling as well. OK. Um, but, you know, I don't want to say it's a boot camp. Boot no, camps it's not, are not a boot camp. It's, not, it's a not a boot camp, camp. No. A boot camp right. at all. What we do is we work with organizations and corporations to figure out ways that we can upskill their current workforce. Yes. And then we really provide opportunities for the community mm-hmm. to come and get the skills that they need so they can thrive. Absolutely. Uh, so it's really like, now this is like really doing God's work. Mm-hmm. Because if you look at the world, you look at everything that's taking place in, from Atlanta to Nashville, mm-hmm. everywhere, like the cost of living is going crazy. Yes. All right. Inflation is insane. Yes. And on the day to day life, completely day to day life, yeah. everything cost of everything is going up. Yes. But people's skill sets to like be able to obtain opportunities. No, uh, especially if you're already in your field. Yes. You know, come out of college. I think they're fine. But you're 35 years old trying to switch into something. Yep. It's tough. It's tough. And now, you know, 100,000 is the new 30,000. Unfortunately, you know, so you remember my payroll, unfortunately, (laughs) I'm like, you what? how much? And I'm like, I guess that's right. Yeah. So the game has changed now. (laughs) Yeah. And it's like, yo, you know, when I was coming out of college and things like 30,000, $35,000. That was the base. You yeah. were balling. You were like, yo, okay, I look, made... This is some Tennessee stuff. No, this I don't is know some, about that. No, no, no. It's some Tennessee stuff. You made $40,000. Oh, you was doing your thing. Yeah. And, <laughs> and t- I'm telling you. And then time, slowly but surely... Everybody in here is laughing, by the way. No, I'm telling you. $30,000 in the early 2000s. Well, y'all was probably still... You know, I'm 40. So y'all was probably... I'm not that blue, okay. no, but I hear you. <laughs> but I'm saying like, you know, you yeah. didn't really have to make a whole lot of money to have Not like 120. A, you thought at your peak you were going to make $100,000. Exactly. That was like, if I can get to $100,000, wow. Right. Yeah. Like, no, that's the base. Now it's like, I'm 25,000 years old. I need to make $100,000. You got to make six yeah. figures. Yeah. It's like, it's only it's the only way. Yeah. Or dual income. Or dual income. That's the only way. Yeah. So what we're trying to do just from a community standpoint, is really work with organizations to pipeline these people that we're training into these opportunities. Right. So we're working with companies like Amazon, Ship, mm-hmm. Deloitte. What are the skills? Give me some examples of things uh, so are, are the, like courses the, or classes. Yeah, so the areas that we focus in are software development, so okay. front end and back end. Yep. We want to create full stack engineers, uh, which is a huge need. Biggest need. Uh, biggest need, yeah. but we started off with just doing front end. Yep. Which is much easier to learn. Much easier to yeah. learn. And then a lot of corporations was like, yo, now we need full stack developers. Yeah. So we started offering full stack development. Yeah. From their uh, perspective, they're like, we could pay one engineer yeah. or if we just have a front end, we got to, we still got to have a to get a middle end. stack and back end. Yeah. Or yeah. back end. Right. Depending yeah. on what it is. Uh, and then we focus on uh, cybersecurity. Okay. And uh, data analytics. Okay. No IT. Uh, like IT support. Yeah. No. Okay. It's no money. Okay. Yeah. So like IT support, help desk. You will see the like, reason I'm asking it's very selfish. Okay. So because we're all remote at Blavity now, yeah. one of the things our teams are getting attacked with all these phishing schemes. 
Yeah. And um, we've had system people actually like text as me to our employee base and be like, hey, can you buy this gift card? Like, can you buy this gift card real quick? Da da da. And then yeah. my team will like go buy the gift card thinking that it's me texting them. Yeah. I'm like, first of all, I would never text you asking you to buy no <laughs> gift card. But also I get it. Like these, they're getting very sophisticated they and we've are. been trying to find people to come work in house or a company that can manage our IT. We can. Now I do, this is not a solicitation for people to DM me you don't have with to get all that. your services. I, we are fine. We will figure it out. Do not come offering you your company to me. You have to get a uh, DM. <laughs> we can handle that for you. So really? yeah, let me just tell you. So we started with really the school. Okay. Uh, and we're, we've graduated over 125 people. Mm hmm. Uh, half of those have been able to take the skill set and go get new careers. Mm -hmm. Other half have been able to skill up. Mm -hmm. uh, but literally, we're launching our MSP. So mm -hmm. break down the MSP for people. So yeah, it's called managed service provider. Mm -hmm. And what we'll be doing is we'll be managing people's IT. Oh my god! Please take it. So we'll be I taking like this company in New York. Way too much money. Yeah. So we'll be taking your your mm -hmm. department and we'll be managing your IT department for you. That's so great. Uh, because we really want to create opportunities for the people that we're training. Yeah. One thing I don't like to do is beg people for anything. Right. All right. So I'm not going to keep. These companies. Well, I'm explain gonna... the business model because I'm making some assumptions. So. Okay. So I don't like to have to beg companies to say, hey, we have this diverse talent and could you please create opportunity? Mother, may I? Can you please create opportunity for these people? Yeah. And, you know, because. To work yes. because a lot of times they all have these diversity initiatives, but yes. they really don't want to hire black people. Well, yeah. All right. Well, yeah. some I, of them do. Afrotech has a lot of clients that really do. Some of them, but they want a very specific, very narrow, very on. pattern matched. Like, oh, you went to, you had this CS degree from this university, yes. and I want you to be black. I'm like, well, that's just not a thing. You don't <laughs> go to that university. All right. So, <laughs> so it is, yeah, you know, they just make us jump through a lot of hoops. Yeah. You got to speak our language. You got to pass all these tests. All those things. And then they really assume. So when you say, Hey, I'm working with the underserved, uh, under, uh, served communities, mm -hmm. they like, yo, they don't have no degree. They well, barely can talk. Yeah. They don't have soft skills. Right. And I'm like, yo, these folks got a college degree, yes. you know? Right. From like, four year universities. Yes. Just like everybody else. Yes. Just like everybody else. So right. will you create opportunity? So we just got tired of really, you know, we work with some amazing companies. Sure. They're, they're hey, we're going to pipeline people yeah. in. Amazon does that very yes. well. Bank of America. Like some of the more traditional corporate companies. Yeah, I like Shipped in mm -hmm. Birmingham. Yeah. We have a Shipped. great we have a great partnership with them mm -hmm. and they are all on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we we uh, had a pilot program. We did like 30 people. They hired all 30. Wow. From making $30,000 to now making $65,000 exactly. a year. Exactly. That's a game changer. Right, but from their perspective, they would have had to pay somebody $100,000 exactly. in another city. So it's a, exactly. good, it's a good deal for everybody it's involved. It's a great <laughs> deal for everybody involved. So yeah. what we're going to do is, is that we're going to go out and get contract work. Okay. So we'll go with the blavities of yep. the world and we'll go to all these companies, these yep. healthcare companies that like yep. to outsource everything. Universities. Everybody. Yep. And we'll be able to hire our own students. So we really want to oh, build, wow. build our own kind of workforce. So it was two different business models. Business model one was, hey, we've got a workforce. They're newly trained. Hire them and we're going to take a recruiting fee effectively, I'm, yep. I'm guessing. Yeah. 10%, 15% of the first year's salary. How did you break um, it down? So what we do is, is that our, our school is tuition based. Okay. So people have to pay to come to the school. Sure. Uh, or if we work with a corporation, a corporation may say, hey, we want to pay for 15 slots. Great. And then, hey, we want first right of refusal. On all these to, graduates. On all these graduates. Perfect. And then we'll see which ones we want. Yep. And then you can, you know, we, you know, we got five of them we want. Yeah. And you can market the, the 10 to right. the community. You Perfect. know. Great. So that's kind of like the business model. Okay. Uh, so tuition, uh, placement, and then corporate corporations is really what we want to hang our hat on. Yep. So we were uh, like a B2C right. in 2021. That's tough, but yes. 2022, we yes. are B2B. I hear you. So we're B2B. Team B2B. B2B. Oh, yeah. <laughs> business to business. <laughs> yes. So we we let B2B foster yes. B2C. Right. So when we develop a corporation partnership, mm -hmm. they uh, foster and say, hey, we're going to pay for 30 people to go through the program, yep. help us recruit or help us find these people in yeah, the community. So it's a much easier sale. It's you a say, much easier sale. Look, Jack, 
I'm going to pay for you to go learn so that you can make more money. Who doesn't want that opportunity? Exactly. So it's a lot of people that really want these type of opportunities. Mm -hmm. It's just now they can't afford to come to my school and mm -hmm. I, we can't afford to do it for free. No. And we're not a... This is not, not a non-for-profit. This is a not no. a non-for-profit. We are a for-profit organization. Yes. We do have a non-profit arm that does the community work. Yes. But, you know, we just want to be able to say, hey, corporation, here was, here's what we have. Right. Cut a check. Yep. And we're going to foster and, and train up all this diverse talent that you love. Whoever you need. <laughs> right. Okay. So then now the new business model is that um, you're able to say, okay, we've got 10% of our graduates immediately get placed. Great. Yeah. 20% go off and do whatever they're going to do. Yeah. Now we still have a bucket of people who have work. They're very qualified. We know they're qualified because we just trained them. Yep. So why not just take out the middleman and we're going to offer this service directly? So yep. did you start another LLC or are you keeping it all the same? No, we created a whole you know, nother like LLC. You like to get into it and work smart. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because so the we, people need to know. We created a whole nother LLC. Okay. Uh, we didn't want to co-mingle the funds <laughs> so y'all know a co mingle yeah. phrase yeah. for entrepreneurs do not co-mingle co your, your funds or your legal entities because that's also how you get not protected if you get sued for pivot tech the other business income is at risk you better believe it so if somebody says hey you know, you all didn't give me the education that I wanted and needed and all yeah, this other yeah. stuff. I didn't get a job. I didn't get a job. And we don't make promises. Of course not. So, you know, if they sued the school, yep. then our MSP dollars right. would get tied into that. That's right. So what we make on the MSP, we don't want to put it in the no. Pivot Tech school pot. Correct. So we want to keep that separate. So we set up a whole nother LLC. Mm -hmm. We're officially launching. We've already, we already have clients. Uh, already, but we haven't announced it to the public yet. Okay. So you hear it here first. Uh, you know, uh, Pivot Tech Solutions. Okay. We're working with clients all across the country to really manage your IT departments. So you don't have to worry about that. I love it. You know, so you don't have to stress about being hacked or yes, those, the text messaging schemes. The text messaging schemes right. or any of that. We'll put the protections that you need. So that your organization can do what you do best. Creating email addresses for new employees. All of that. Setting up password, blah, blah, blah. All of it. So if you okay. have IT problems. Yes. Or your computers. Your ship your, in the computer. Ship it out. All that. Oh, Lord Jesus. So we'll take all that off your this hands. This is so exciting. We will tap into your computer, see what's going on. Yeah. The remote. In, the remote all into that. All of that. Uh, currently already working with Core Civic. So okay. Core Civic is a huge pr prison yes. company here. So we're already working with them. That's great. Already working with uh, United uh, Smokeless Tobacco. So they, okay. they like a tobacco company. I've never uh, so, heard of them. So they all the dip. Uh-huh. So you probably, you don't know anything about that, but I dip, smoke, like but... people that smoke, uh -huh. they have the huge... Is that main, the thing that... Yeah, that they, they put right yeah, here. Like the baseball players. Yeah. So it's I like a... cousin a, who does that. I was like, what's wrong with him? Yeah. It's a $20 billion company. Wow. They they have a warehouse in Nashville, mm. uh, right on Rosa Parks. Mm -hmm. So we have, handle all of their data infrastructure. Wow. Currently now. This is exciting. So it's super exciting. So when I talk about we want to build a $100 million company. Yes. Like the there school, it is. but the MSP is really where we go. Yeah, gonna... the school is your, now your your workforce pipeline, and people are basically just offsetting your costs to build your own workforce. Come on, you see it? <laughs> Come on, work smart. <laughs> Come on, work I smart. love it here. Yes. This is so incredible. Now, y'all, yes. if y'all want to steal his model, make sure you talk to him first. Please but talk you, to me first. But you can steal it if you want. There's so many, so many people who need to to get these types of jobs. Is exactly. So, you know, I, I was I say, man, I, I share the game. Mm -hmm. I share information. Yep. It's a lot of work. Yeah, it's a lot of work. You know, yeah. if you can do this, then great. You know, <laughs> God, God you. bless you. More yes. power to you because the hell we went through trying to figure out everything. Yeah. Trying to open up. I've never ran a school. <laughs> so do you have like full-time? So we have full-time employees. Okay. So at first it was, we didn't have full-time Yeah, employees. just like an online course kind of. So we, we hired instructors. Right, to come in. To come in and do mm -hmm. it. And really it helped us. Did you have enough was, people in Nashville that knew, or you have white instructors? No, no, no. You have black instructors? Black instructors. In Nashville? In Nashville. Okay. But no, see, we're virtual. Aha, so now. We have oh. software developers in Chicago teaching. Aha, uh -huh, yeah. So it really changed the game for us. Yeah. Because we was just going to be this. You know, Josh has this brick and mortar tech school right on the corner on of Saturdays Seventh. we code. Yeah, on Seventh and Jefferson. We're right here yeah. and it's gonna be local and right. we want local impact. Right. And that's what 
my, the vision was. God said, uh uh-uh. uh. God was like, yo, bro, nah, we finna take this global. I love it. So it really, literally, when it went from the pandemic hit, yeah. And we started to build virtual, but it really took off was we was on the Roland Martin show. Mm, I love Roland. Shout out to Roland. Roland Shout rides out. or dies. Sometimes I'm like, all right, Uncle Roland. Yes. So but, yes. Roland, Put but here's on. the thing. Like, <laughs> so we had like, we was putting out press, le- press releases or whatever about right. our school. Yes. And I know for sure Roland thought we did something else. Okay. I didn't think he, he didn't think it was a school. What did he think it was? So, uh, so here's what it was. <laughs> so you remember like when the pandemic hit and then all the school, all the kids were trying to figure out the virtual model and all the parents were trying to figure out yeah. like the Zoom thing and trying right. to get, so I think that's what they, they, they thought we did. Oh. So I think they thought we helped parents. Set up their work from home, kids from home school. Yes. System. Yes. Oh, that was, that's a cute idea too. Very cute idea. Yeah. But that was the very first question he asked me. Oh, you're so like, we, well, so, so literally <laughs> we live and yeah. he's like, yo, how are you helping? You're on his YouTube, cause he does a whole syndicated So he's on thing. his YouTube. Yeah. And yeah. so it's like a lot of people, 600,000 people. Yeah. Like, I didn't know it was that big. Yeah, his YouTube channel. And he doesn't get enough credit for this. Yeah. He actually has one of the biggest black media kind of distribution networks. Crazy. You know, uh, number one is the Breakfast Club, obviously. Yeah. But he's he's up there, but he doesn't get the advertising dollars yeah. and the brand recognition. So yeah. shout out to Roland. Shout out Send to Roland Martin, first, man. Thank my you, man. my brother. It, I'm talking about you helped us on a whole nother level, yes. literally. So we was on his show. He asked me that question. Mm-hmm. I was like, we don't do that, <laughs> but we do this. Right. Literally. And so we was on there for two minutes. Mm-hmm. As soon as we got off his show, bing, bing, bing. we got over 150 applications. Wow. To come to the school. Incredible incredible and we didn't have the infrastructure what, what was your price point so our price point then was like eighty five hundred dollars it's a lot of money it's a lot of money yeah yeah it's a sure. lot of money payment plan <laughs> right. <laughs> so literally from when we was on his show and uh-huh. we started seeing the applications from chicago Everybody. atlanta yeah. dallas yeah and so that just showed us like yo we got some we got some yeah and from that point forward like we've been scaling like crazy like we've been growing like crazy partnerships have been coming out just everything has been great when it comes to the school and then we've just been able to build a amazing team that can really like take us to a whole nother level Mm -hmm. so put like people the right people in place so are you day-to-day in the business or have you been able to hire yourself out of a job yet not yet okay so pretty much all i do is just i i just uh you know what they say, shake hands and kiss babies? Yeah. That's all I do. We all aspire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So pretty much all I do is, is just build relationships. Mm-hmm. So I do all of the business development stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and then we have operations people that handle mm-hmm. all of the operations. We have uh, admissions teams. Mm-hmm. We have student liaisons. Mm-hmm. We have all these people that... So did you hire an operator then as your number two? Or what's the, how did you... Um, get to this point where you're like, okay, cool. Or did you just do every role first and then you hired somebody and then you moved on? So no, what we did was we hired a, a contractor. Uh huh. So we hired a contractor. She was like our very first person to help us get organized. Yes. So she did nothing but operations. So right. She specialized in ops. Okay, great. So she got us all like- I say this cause this is the question people want to know. They're like, I've got the vision. Yep. I know what this can be, but I'm not interested in building the Asana board. Right. So, <laughs> you know, I would tell entrepreneurs as so when you're in the beginning stages of building your business, mm-hmm. you're going to operate everything. Yes. OK. But what you need to do is start to build those job descriptions mm. of exactly what you want this person to be doing before yes. you even hire this person. Yes. So like really start to build. So don't look at the now, mm-hmm. look at where you want to be. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. start looking and start projecting. Okay. Yeah. We're going to need this person, this person, and this person. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and start building out what that job looks like. Mm-hmm. Cause you can't tell nobody what to do if you've never done it. So what I tell people similar. So in, in the work smart program in our curriculum, we talk about your CEO tasks, which are the tasks that only you can do. What are the yep. tasks that only Josh can do? Yep. And then your operating tasks, which is a task that 
somebody else could be doing, but you're doing them right now yeah. and being really clear on what those are and then grouping them together. And that's your beginning job description. Better believe it. Right. And yeah. then you have your org chart, which yeah. is what is it right now, which is probably just you and a couple people. <laughs> right. And then based off of your vision, where do you need your org chart to look like? Better believe it. And then you work backwards. You work backwards. Mm -hmm. So we, we got an operations person that kind of organized all of that. I love it. From processes. What was their title? So she is like, she is over ops. So they're like ops director. Okay. The yeah. titles are important. People are going to be like, okay, what is like the title? Ops director. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that's director what it was. Of operations. But she's director Sounds of operations, but she's still, she's a still a contractor with us now. Oh, wow. Okay. So really, if you can't hire employees, yeah. hire contractors yeah, that, that have specialize right. in the areas in which you need. Yes. So yes, you need somebody over accountant. You don't have to bring on anybody. No. Let me pay an accountant or a company yep. that I can have my accountant go to. Right. So we started to do that yep. until we was able to get the revenue up mm -hmm. to be able to hire full-time people. So smart. So we started to say, all right, we need somebody that's over students. So you're a seasoned entrepreneur. Yeah. Because when yeah. I talk to new entrepreneurs, they're like, oh, they're so reluctant to hire. Yeah. They're like, the cash flow, it's intimidating. Yeah. They feel like, well, I got to hold on to everything. And it's like, no, the faster you get through those, they're not illegitimate emotions. Right. I understand the fear. It's yeah. intimidating. It's scary to be responsible for people's paychecks and commitments yeah. and contracts. But the faster you can move through that, the faster you're actually going to be able to grow and scale. You and, better believe it. You know? And you really can't. So people focus on money too much. Mm. All right. You can't focus on the money. Mm. Focus on the plan. Okay. When you focus on the plan, guess what's going to show up? What? The money. It's, I agree. It never. I'm talking about. It never ever. You gotta work the plan. Fails. Mm -hmm. You work the plan. You yeah. work the plan, and then every time money will just show up. That's what happened to us. Mm. So literally, we didn't. Ha we started a multi million dollar company mm -hmm. with twenty five hundred dollars. Right. We had no. We didn't. You we didn't, were the money. You were the first employee. We <laughs> were the money. Yes. We didn't start with anything. And right. every time, literally every time that we had to pay mm -hmm. an instructor to teach, mm -hmm. money just showed up. Right. I cannot make this stuff you up. You had the right plan at the right place. At the right time. At the right time. But even if you had started this three years ago, I think you would have had the same outcome because Probably. the industry is growing so quickly. Yep. It, it is such an underserved uh, part of our community. Yeah. People can see Yo, other people are getting money over here. Right. Oh, I want to be in this game. <laughs> right, you right. know? And, so, oh. and I think the George, see, George Floyd changed the game for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. But when the George Floyd situation happened, it opened up. I don't know if I can say white guilt on your podcast. You can say white okay, guilt gotcha. on my podcast. We've <laughs> but white guilt kicked in very strong. We had a window of opportunity. And we had a window of opportunity yes. to really seize seize that moment. Yeah. And so literally, like, so we and would get just get contracts. That's my thing. Yeah. Get the contracts. Get the contracts. So we were just randomly getting checks. Yeah. We were literally randomly I love it. getting checks. And that, again, we weren't focused on like, yo. We gotta go make payroll, <laughs> uh, and we was having those conversations, yeah. and we know we had emergency. I had to like, man, yeah, I can go dip in my money. money over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, else you know, know. We can shuffle. Yeah. We can shuffle some money, uh, but we really, you know, just focused on the plan. Yeah. How do we become the best technology school in the world? Mm -hmm. And every step of the way, we just started to do that. We just started mm -hmm. to focus on that. Okay. Mm -hmm how can we make the student experience better? Mm -hmm. Because the last group, you know, they outcomes had- Outcomes weren't so good. Outcomes, you know, attrition was horrible. Yes. All right, how can we start developing? Okay, now we need a student liaison. Right. So you focused on realistic, data-driven problems and then just solve those problems. I solve think that's the problems. other thing is, yep. as entrepreneurs, we tend to be very- ambitious and have all this, well, we got to do this. We got to do this. We got to do this. And it's like, okay, but what's happening today exactly. in the business? So I think yeah. that's a, a skill set that you have that other people. Yeah. You know, I just really, I would say my superpowers, I'm not scared to fail. Right. And I'll take, I'm risky. Mm -hmm. I'm very risky. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, I'm like my risk tolerance. And then it's just like, I don't have, I have a short memory. Mm, you let it go. I let it go. Right. And really in entrepreneurship, you're going to have to let it go. Right. Or you're going to go, you're going to drive yourself insane. Mm -hmm. Cause you're going to always. I'm not good at not at letting go. Okay. I have things where I'm like, you know, in 2016, there was that one, three months where we didn't really hit it and I'm never going to do that again. 
like we don't have a big YouTube channel on Blavity because I'm like we tried it three times yeah and I'm like we just didn't it was a lot of we probably spent a million dollars trying to build a YouTube channel really yeah over time hell yeah. Yeah, yeah you know video content is very expensive especially in LA where everybody wants to be a movie star and everybody wants to make all these highly produced I call them high produced um, content I'm like you know Black folks, sometimes we just want the ratchet stuff. We don't want the overproduced, right. beautifully shot right. YouTube video. Yep. And so I was like, fine, if we can't do it, I'm done with it. Move on. Move on to something else. <laughs> yeah. But it, actually, now we're doing YouTube videos. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> but so, it took me a while. <laughs> so you should really, as entrepreneurs, you just have to figure out be ways sure. to just, you know, let stuff go. Yeah. You know, and just yeah. be able to move on and say, hey, all right. It, that didn't work. Mm-hmm. All right, what can I do to make it work this time? Yeah. So I'm the same way. I'm just now kicking back my YouTube. Right. So we're, oh, we I have, saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we really are doing a lot. So I'm in real estate. Right. Okay, there. we got to talk about the real estate. We talk about the real estate. So. And also, when are we bringing the dry cleaning back? I got half on that. Oh, you know, I. I I'm like, I still hear cash. Yeah. <laughs> it's just. It's <laughs> cash. It, I mean, it's, it's, it's cash, cash. I mean, yeah. plus I had an amazing location. I hear what you're saying. Is the wholesale man still around? Yeah. I, okay, I, we're gonna I, to, I still, yeah. We're going to have to figure that out. Okay, yeah, we can talk <laughs> about it. 2023. Yeah. <laughs> Josh and him. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We can do it. Like it's. <laughs> Sounds it's, like this is storefront to me. Yeah, it's, it's, it's cash flow. It's cash flow. Okay, anyways. Cash flow. So now y'all heard it where it's coming from. Real estate. How did you get into real estate? So, real estate, I started buying real estate early. Okay. I had a guy that I used to work with my very last job. He was buying real estate in Nashville. Mm-hmm. He sold me my very first house. Mm-hmm. And that's when real estate was super cheap in Nashville. 50K, 100K. 100K. Yeah. So literally I bought a piece of land for $3,000. I bought a house for $40,000. I bought another piece of land for like $18,000. So you're doing residential? So I, residential. Okay. All residential. And um, so I really just now kicking back up mm-hmm. to buy like a lot of stuff. So it's tough market right now. Not really. Tell me more. I'll You're the you second more. person who's like, it's actually not that bad. I'm like, what are you, what no, no, Redfin no. are you on and so, what Redfin am I on? Let's just talk about it. Yes. So Nashville is, Nashville is super expensive. Yes. All right. I have the stuff that I have. Right. You have and your, yeah. I just, you know, my house is a group home. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I do my nonprofit stuff mm-hmm. with my group home. Mm-hmm. So I have a group home. I rent out to like individuals that have mental health issues. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a house manager that manages that. Mm-hmm. I never get a phone call mm-hmm. and the cash flow is ridiculous. So, I mean, I can, so the average person rents out their home mm-hmm. and make probably like, you know, $2,000 for the rent, right? right. Or $3,000 for the rent. Yeah. By the time you pay the mortgage and things of that nature, yeah, yeah. your cash flow is about $400. Right. Like I cash flow $4,000. Hmm. You know? Well, cause you have multiple people and, paying it. Yeah. So home. it's like, do you have to have a special permit to do that? We'll talk about it off. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, you don't know. You don't. You don't. You don't. You don't. You don't. You, you, it's just transitional housing. It's called transitional okay, housing. Okay. Okay. So you don't need a permit. So really, as my strategy is, is I want to retire in five years. I want to be retired in forty at forty five. Mm-hmm. So right now is just like, how can I accumulate enough assets mm-hmm. to give me the life that I want to live? When I'm at 45. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I need to start looking for multifamily places. There's not a lot of multifamilies in Nashville. Okay, so uh, it's right. So I, I said, I noticed that. So I was on LoopNet. So LoopNet mm-hmm. is. I love a, LoopNet. Uh, yeah, so I'm on late, late at night on LoopNet. <laughs> LoopNet and GoDaddy get yeah. a lot of my time. <laughs> All right. So I'm up late at night on LoopNet. And I started looking in Alabama. Okay, wait. So back up. LoopNet is. So LoopNet is a website that has all of the commercial real estate. So office buildings, uh, apartment complexes. And then they have like stuff that you want to lease on the commercial side. And then I think people sell businesses on LoopNet as Mm -hmm. well. So people sell businesses on LoopNet. So it's like Mm -hmm. a commercial spot for like. So if you go to realtor.com, it's like the commercial realtor.com. That's right. Uh, so and multifamilies in certain cities might only be on LoopNet and not on Redfin. Exactly. So I'm up on LoopNet late at night. I'm like, okay. I hear a voice says, "Hey, son, look in Alabama." I was like, okay, I'm gonna look in Alabama. So literally, I search multifamily Alabama. Yeah. So all these multifamily spots come up. 
I saw one, it was like 16 units Oof. for like $300,000. Fascinating. Birmingham? No, Montgomery. Montgomery is still big. So I look, I'm like, yo, 16 units for $300,000. Yeah, that's $60,000 down on a bad day. So here we go. So <laughs> literally, I I like scared her some time. I called the guy. Yeah. He was like, yeah, just come down and I can show you everything. Right. So I went down there. He showed me everything he had. So it was an older white gentleman. He's a real he's a realtor. He had hundreds of properties. Right. And he's just now trying to offload a right. lot of things. Yeah. So he showed me the 116 unit. Now it is bad. Mm -hmm. Very bad. Mm -hmm. And uh I saw it. I was like, okay. No. And then he just showed me all the other stuff he had. Uh-huh. So he showed me another 16 unit. Uh-huh. And then he showed me some duplexes that he uh -huh. had. And then he showed me all the other stuff. I was like, okay. I get it. So when I left, I said, I called him. I said, all right, I want both the 16 units and I want both the duplexes. Give it to aggressive. me. Aggressive. Very aggressive. Okay. <laughs> I know it's insane, right? So literally, I mean, all this stuff is bad. Yeah. It's raggedy. I, I hear you. Shameless But plug. it's also Alabama. So it's not like. It's Alabama. It's you know. Montgomery. Yeah. But where the, where the property was located. So all the property is literally two miles away from Alabama State. Right, so students. Students. So I saw that. Yeah. And then it reminded me of North Nashville. Mm. So much so. It reminded me of Tennessee State University mm -hmm. and what's going on around that. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. And then it was like, okay, you're like three miles away from the Capitol. I'm like, mm -hmm. all right. Right, this could flip. This is the hood. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to buy the whole Montgomery. I said, I literally saw <laughs> it. I said, the entire I am city. buying the whole city. I'm going to give me a hundred doors. How many people on this podcast have been like, yeah. And I'm brands. You know what? I'm just going to buy the whole city. It's fine. Like literally I'm going to buy this whole neighborhood. That's what I left. And I so literally I bought two 16 units. I bought the two duplexes and I'm currently Did you do seller financing. Owner finance. Owner finance, that's what I meant. So, so he was like, okay, cool, let's work out a deal. So literally, and that's why people, I don't want people to be so scared when it comes to like their dreams or their mm. ambitions. That's always a workaround. Mm -hmm. So you always look at it like, okay, well, I ain't gonna be able to get no money from, from the, the bank, bank, so I ain't gonna do it. Mm -hmm. No, like in certain markets, they are owner finance. So what yeah. he did was he said, all right, cool, I'm gonna owner finance for you for two years. Right. I know. I'm going to be out of these. Your, in, your income's like this. I'm going to be out of these in seven months. What do you mean? You're going as to sell far them? as no, I'm going to be able to rehab, mm. refinance, mm. pay him. Oh, I see what you're get saying. Get my money back. Yeah. And now cash I have flow. cash flow. Yeah. That's all I saw. Right. I didn't see like how bad they were. <laughs> They're bad. So how okay. much money have you had to put in? A lot. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so like so so honestly so like literally. You know how you get into things and then yeah, it like, just I'm starts. I'm in it now. It's just, I'm in it. <laughs> yeah. So literally, and I'm taping this process. So mm -hmm. I have a YouTube channel. Yeah. Shameless plug, YouTube channel. Uh, Joshua YouTube channel? Mundy. Uh, we'll put the link right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right here. Click <laughs> yeah, yeah, down yeah. there. Who knows? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, and we're just really documenting the process. I okay. just want to show people from start to finish because people really want to get into real estate. Yep. And I'm just showing them from start to finish what is it like to go and get something that's uber- Raggedy raggedy yeah. and really go through the process of rehabbing it mm -hmm. and then really going to the next deal. So mm -hmm. it's called the Burr method. And I'll just get it to you mm -hmm. real quick. So you buy, mm -hmm. you rehab, mm -hmm. you refinance, mm -hmm. then you reinvest. Mm -hmm. So reinvest in another property. There we go. Okay. So it's Burr. I feel like there's all these people who say this stuff on Instagram and mm. all these coaches and stuff that are like, all right, you go over here, you wait for the city to auction it off and then no, you buy it. And I'm just like, this is too much for it's me. Very too, it's way too much. All I did was got with a realtor. Okay. He showed me everything he had. Yes. I literally said, I want it all. Yes. He said, hey, uh, how much can you put down? Yes. We negotiated mm -hmm. how much I wanted to put down. Mm -hmm. Literally, so I was like, all right, man, I only put 5% down on this one. Yeah. Right, this one going to cost me a little bit more money. I don't, I don't, let me just do 5% on this one. Let right. me do 10% on this one. So total, so I got all that property mm -hmm. for $650,000. So one home in Nashville, right. I got 36 doors mm -hmm. for $600,000. Beautiful. Now, what I'm doing is, is that I'm doing a project at a time, mm -hmm. which is like- So something sit. 
something said, yeah. wow, you take your money. Yes. So whatever your money is, so if you have it in a 401k or if you have it in a savings account uh -huh. or whatever it is, you take that money. Mm -hmm. It cost me $60,000 for a duplex, right? Mm -hmm. It cost me $30,000 to rehab it. Right. All right. So then now I've, it's worth, I would say $90,000. Mm -hmm. Well, I go to the bank and say, hey, bank, I need to refinance this property. Mm -hmm. I've, now it's a beautiful thing. Yes. It appraises for $150,000. Now you can take some money out. Guess what? Yeah. Now I can take my investment yes. right back out. Yeah. I have a property that's, uh, just making money. Yeah. I can take that same 30 and now I'm going to put it in the next property. Right. And it's just rinse and repeat. Mm -hmm. So now my 16 units, yeah, I'm going to have to go and put a little bit more money. <laughs> but I may say, hey, I go call out my rich friends and say, yeah. hey, man, uh, you, you want, want in on this? this? Yeah, you know? Honestly, sign me up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in. I got five on it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, yo, <laughs> you know, look, I'm going to give you 20%. I don't want to do the work. That's my thing. I'm like, I am not interested. So it's so many people like you. And I'm like, yo, so it has me thinking like, okay, well, how can I create? A black real estate investment fund. A black real estate investment mm -hmm. fund where you, you're not having to do the work, mm -hmm. but you, you own and mm -hmm. you're getting and a you return on your later. investment. Mm -hmm. So totally. just pretty much, that's how I'm going to just build a hundred doors. So my goal is to get a hundred doors mm -hmm. by the time I'm 45. I yeah, got, you're going to get there soon. I got 36. Yeah. So I'll be done probably by the summer. And it compounds. I think that's the other thing. It's is compounds. It's appreciating and it's going to compound over time. And for sure. Now I have leverage. Right. So your balance sheet. My balance sheet is strong enough that I now can walk in the bank. Yes. And they can give me whatever without having to pull credit. Let me see your tax returns. So much. Let me do all these other things. Yes. As I, let's let's talk about this, okay? <laughs> as an entrepreneur. Oh, it's brutal. It is brutal. Buying this house buying as a single woman was a home. brutal. When I'm telling you it's brutal, it is yeah. brutal. So before you quit your job, let me just let's let's talk about yes. this. I'm going to look in the camera right here. <laughs> before you quit your job, mm -hmm. go as buy as many assets as possible. Yeah. While you have that good, strong W-2 mm -hmm. and that income that you can really see and the bank can see that, okay, he's making $4,000 every two weeks. They love that. Yes. They're going to give you the money right. all day long. Yes. So buy as many assets as possible and then take the leap and say, all right, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Yes. And then you're going to take, it's going to take you two years to be able to make some purchases because you got to show tax returns and you got to show all these different things. And and let your income fluctuate. They're like, we don't understand. We don't understand. Let me tell you something. So I bought a house last year. Mm -hmm. So this is the house I live in. Mm -hmm. And the week of closing, mm -hmm. this is the week of closing. Uh -huh. They said, hey, Josh, um, we need a audited p &L. Yeah, for your business. Uh, hold on, hold on. We finna close Friday. Uh-uh. No, they want, because you own over 30% of your business, it's, your income's at risk because you're an entrepreneur. But no, you should have told me this two months ago. <laughs> they did mess up. That's you should have told me when we, when we got in the game. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, they said, no, look, we yeah. wanted to audit. We want to audit yeah, the PNL. Yeah, auditing so, financials is so much work. I had to pay $3,000. How so, much? Three? Three thousand dollars for audit. Yeah, that's honestly people. that's a steal. That's a steal. That's a steal. But the week of closing, yeah, I'm like, yo, yeah, what we doing? So it's just those type of things as an entrepreneur that you really need to have in place and start thinking about. Okay, am I in my purchasing years? Yes. Or, or am I in my chill years? Right. Because that that's a, that'll determine if I'm writing off everything. Yeah. Or if I'm gonna show some income. Yeah. Really, that means you just you just don't think about those things. Yeah. So you heard it here now, so y'all can not have the same pain that Josh and oh, yeah. I have had <laughs> right. going through the banking process trying to buy houses as yes. entrepreneurs. Yes. Or if you do have a partner, you know, who has a full time job, don't both y'all quit at the same time. Exactly. Right? Let one of you keep the W two, the stability. So then it's like, look. We got options here. We yeah. got options here. Now, what are you doing in uh, Costa what? Rica? Oh, yes. I'm going to buy some land in Costa Rica. Yeah. Very excited about that. Um, I went to Costa Rica last year for a month in the pandemic in 2020. And then it went, no, shit. What is 2022? 20, 2021. Yeah. And now um, I just went back for about two and a half weeks and went to Puerto Viejo. Okay. Um, Playa Negra, which is a black beach. It's on the Caribbean side of Costa Rica. Okay. So a lot of the land is owned by black folks, people who are from the Caribbean. Wow. And it's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful part of the country. It's very lush. I mean, you've got monkeys and sloths and toucans and everything just walking down the street. 
you know, you're walking down the street and you can see everything. You wow. know, you're in the rainforest. You're literally yeah. in the rainforest and on the beach. And you're only about an hour away from mountains and everything. It's a four-hour drive from the city center. Um, so I'm going to buy some land there, yeah. build house, family house for like my parents, my friends, myself, so that I have a good place to just chill. And then also I'm trying to make sure everybody else can retire, okay. you know, so that when my parents want to go on vacation and stuff, everything's set up. Okay. Go to the house, gotcha. everything's set up. We got fruit in the back. Yeah. You know, you can grow anything down there. Gotcha. <laughs> so, um, and then Airbnbs. So then build else. out. Yeah. So I'm not going to Airbnb like my main house because okay. that's going to, you know, we're going to put stuff in it. And gotcha. I'm like, I'm private. I'm a private person. Right. Um, but I will then buy some plots of land in that area and then pop up Airbnbs there. So you can buy beachfront land. I don't want to tell too much because I'm like, let me get my stuff first. Yeah, let's talk about that. Before y'all all drive down there and fly <laughs> down to Costa Rica and buy up all my land. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> One of my girlfriends, Simone, she's our um, SVP of revenue at Blavity. She went with me when we went um, last year and she never came back. So now she works remotely. Really? And mm -hmm, she comes back and forth between the states and there, but her main uh, place is Costa Rica. All right, so switching off of real estate for a second, for anyone who's listening to this, who's considering coming to Nashville, who's yeah. an entrepreneur, who's like, I could go to Houston, because I'm trying to avoid taxes. So I could go to Houston, yeah. I could go to Vegas, um, I could go to Miami. Yeah. Why should someone pick Nashville as their city? Uh, Nashville, I would say this, Nashville is the land of opportunity. Mm. It is wide open. A lot of people are coming to the city. Mm -hmm. So, it, I mean, it's not a secret anymore. All right, so... We had, it's the great migration. Mm -hmm. So people from California, New York, Chicago, everybody's moving to Nashville. Mm -hmm. Now it really depends on the flavor that you're looking for. Okay. Now if you're looking for a predominantly thriving African-American areas, mm -hmm. you're probably not going to get that. Mm -hmm. But if you're cool with diverse experiences, yes. if you're open-minded to just like, being around other people, mm -hmm. you know, so people come from Atlanta. It's like they're in shell shock. Hey, where's all the black people? I'm like where this is the not Atlanta. Black people. <laughs> no, it's like you're gonna you you have three black spots. Yeah. But other than that, you're gonna be around other people. So mm. if you're open to networking and meeting new people mm -hmm. and really getting into the business circles here, mm -hmm. then you'll do very well. Yeah. All right. I think that's my advice too. Is like. Yeah, you're not gonna just walk into a bar and just randomly see all your homies. Yeah, so I think for me, moving here, what I'd recommend for people is, it is a city where if you're from here or you went to TSU or like you're Greek, you're probably gonna be able to figure it out because yeah. it's an insular city. But if you're moving and you don't really have strong roots here, like I didn't know anybody besides my parents. Right. It is a little bit hard to navigate because you're not going to just pop up on a bunch of black people like trying to build something. Exactly. You're going to see couples at dinner. You're yeah. going to see maybe a group of guys at a bar. Like, That's but you're it. not going to see. You're not even going to get ingrained into the Nashville culture. Yeah, no. So I think they you can like go to a, Minerva. You can go you to know? Minerva. But no one's going to talk to you for real. Like, I mean, they'll talk to you, but yeah, you you're not, but you're not going to like. It's not like Atlanta where you could go to. The gathering spot and right. you're gonna go like, find black professionals. Yeah. But here's the thing about it, like so Nashville is very it's a melting pot, okay? It is when a melting I, pot. So when I say is is that there's no separation. There's no separation. The have, the have it's everybody's together. Everybody's together. And I like that, but other people who would come here they would be like, like I don't wanna be in the mix where it's high risk and low risk and yeah. people don't have stuff to lose and people have stuff to lose. That's what it is. So you're, yeah. you are on, you're with the doc, the doctor yeah. and the hood is yeah. all, everybody's having a good it's time same together. Spots. Same spots. Same yeah. spots. So you really I think for don't, men it might be easier for women. It's a little like, I don't know. What do I wear? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it's just really about how to really navigate the city. Yeah. So first thing you can do is just go on Facebook and find, you know, Black Nashville. It's also a Facebook city. Other cities aren't like that. Yeah. So it's a Facebook and city and an Instagram city. You yep. all have Instagram accounts that everybody follows. Yeah. And I was like, oh. Yeah. So that's that's where you can find like what's happening. Uh huh. And you can start going to events, and uh -huh. then you'll realize is that the Nashville Black circles are super super small. Yes. Uh, and that's how you can kind of navigate the city. Mm -hmm. But then from a business perspective, just connect with the chamber. 
That's the other thing. The Urban League and the Chamber are very strong here. Yeah. Which is really nice. Yeah. So you start connecting with the Chamber. You start doing like we're a very give back city. Mm -hmm. So if you start to really start giving back and start getting involved Mm -hmm. and things of that nature, then you'll know everybody that you need to know. Mm -hmm. And then everybody will start plugging you in. Mm -hmm. They'll figure out what you do. A lot of text message. Hey, we're going to come... this night here, yep. DJ over here. I'm like, okay, I'm getting a lot of checks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then you start navigating and yeah. then, you know, then you have the, all these new little bars that are popping yeah, up too. Yeah, pull up. Yeah, pull up. <laughs> and then that's Mac. just, yeah. We're going to so, go today. Yeah. That's, so that's what happens and that's yeah. how you can navigate. So Nashville is a great city. Mm-hmm. And if you are black and about your business, you can make a lot of money here. Yeah, I definitely think you can make a lot of money. Yeah, but That's if you sure. if you like an introvert no. and come to this city, I'm an introvert. Yeah, but you know. but you you're Morgan. Yeah, so, so I it's can different. Figure it out. You know what I'm saying? Figure, I can I can finesse the system a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're different. <laughs> but if you know somebody doesn't have like a don't Network. know how to like navigate, then yeah. it can be hard. But Nashville's a good city though. It is a great city. Yeah. All right, Josh. Well, thank you for sharing, dropping. I learned so much. The dry cleaning business, which I'm definitely not forgetting. We're definitely coming back to that. Yes. Uh, Real estate game, pivot tech. I mean, you dropped so many gems. So thank you so much. Appreciate you having me. Thank you so very much. All right, y'all. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment, all the things. Make sure you check out pivot tech. And I'll see you at the next episode of Work Smart. See ya.